So to start today's class, we called it. We talk about with, you know, Jacqueline. Um, what should we teach? Of course, she gave me ideas, and I have some ideas after teaching. I did two workshops last year at ICSU. I try and participate to do more there too. So this is called the Chi Flow and uh, Art Therapy. As you see, there's a big character here, and some people have knowledge. That's a chi. So that's the breath. So it's really, it's like if you do yoga, it's almost the prana is a little bit the same, you know, kind of take how to really get that chi flow, and that's how you can take care of your well-being as individual. So that's what we call the inner strength, breath, and spirit. So that's my um, basically um, website, so you can check it out later. Um, okay, so my name is Danielle Zhang. As I said, I really love to introduce people, which I'm proud of Chinese culture and art. So it's Danielle Zhang plus art and culture. That's my little company. So nice, please. Okay, thank you. Just forward, uh huh? Okay. So what is really the chi? You know. So actually, can I get everyone come up a little bit? So. Great, wonderful. So I just want you to relax a little bit. Yeah, just roll around because when you do the Chinese calligraphy, you really just pretend you have a hands in your like paint your hands of Chinese brush. I should have give you one. You know, let me just pass this on. You can open the package. Yeah. I think you can just just like this. Pull it open. First of all. So this is the pen you can buy online or in the art store. But then if you really want to get into that, I will teach you how to do it with a real brush. Okay, so what you'll do, you will just, um, that's okay, let's just take it out. Don't even worry about it too. I will help you with how to get the ink into it. But I want to show you, so this is the pen, normally quite a bit longer than regular writing pen. So this is the right ring, right? Eventually we're going to take it off and then you can get the flow. So if you just pump like this, and I show you how to hold it, right? So you have this one, two, hold it, and then the rest one just next to it, and the rest one, the little one here. So I will help you with demonstration, but right now we just try to, whichever way you want to hold. Because I really want you to start to feel that chi flow. To write a Chinese calligraphy, there's two ways. You could sit down, like I would put a chair. I can write sitting down. Okay? But really, most of the master writers are actually standing up. So I'll give you even better control of it and then to really pour your whole emotions and that chi into the calligraphy. Okay. So let's just do three exercises, okay? So have your feet apart just lightly and just relax. And then you will hold your pants and you just go the circle. Outer word, go through here, that's called the Dantian. So that's where the chi should come up for, from. If you do a yoga, you would notice the prana. So it is up here, not here. Okay, and then you go the other way. Counterwise. Okay, so can you feel even a little bit of strength on your arms and uh, like even elbows? So that's why when you actually do Chinese calligraphy, it's a form of exercise and other than just calm your um, all the emotions and all that. So thank you for you already touched face on that, how you enjoyed it in the past. Okay, we can see that now. All right. So what is qi? Qi is a life-giving vital energy that unites your body, your mind, and your spirit, right? So based on the ancient Chinese uh, philosophy, qi concept is very much like, as I said, like concept prana from practice yoga. All these ancient like practice and art forms, and exercise, well-being, somewhat connected, right? 
So with your yoga practice and the Chinese house practitioner really refer it as life force and that's a chi. Because when it leaves your body, you die. <laughs> right? We always in the English expression is like, oh, draw the last. Right. So that's why it's so important. So harvesting and the good way to use the chi can create like a power and movement in your body, just like the little thing we did, right? If you can feel, you kind of open up sternum and you already get that whole thing like flow and kind of you command this space and the chi around you. And then of course the proper body alignment. So that's why I will teach you how to write it correctly. Not like this, right? But you know, there's way how to do it. So then your alignment combined with relaxation of your joints and muscles can allow your chi to flow throughout your body and make powerful movement, but also have a waste of time. And that's something you can master it and it's need to be mastered when you learn Chinese pretty So the Chinese believe one of the cause of sickness is really the stagnation of your chi not going through your body. So um, that's why it's so important that to have your chi balanced and flow and being strong. So that would focus on your energy outgoing and also promote good health. Okay. So now we're talking about it. I think I don't know what's in your treasure box, Susan. But Talking about Chinese calligraphy, we had to talk about the called the Wen Fang Su Bao. So Wen Fang Su Bao is a full treasures of study. And uh, as you can see, we talk about the brush we have, right? Then modern days, you actually cut a little bit corners. I tell you what's good about those inventions, Taigang technology, and what's the lack of it. We can touch base about that when we start the hands on. And then, so brush, brush has so many types. So it with a different, you know, hair. So there's a how long how, so that's from a wolf. And the young how is softer from the, the, the sheep. And you know, OP. So depend on which kind of hair made of the brush and they will give you a yield different um, effect when you're some specific good for painting and some specific good for writing and now these days or even in the past you can have a big brush even right on the floor that kind of thing and with the music movement and really good exercise too um so paper and we know there's inventions there's a four big invention paper is one of it and that's from ancient china i don't know who wants to tell me the other four that's another class <laughs> okay so so paper is invented basically uh, of the modern paper making process is attached to the core of the official in the Han Dynasty. So that goes back to 2006 BC and to, to no, 206 BC and 220 CE. So Xuan paper, which is a specific type used for Chinese art, um, calligraphy and painting. I show you really quick. And we're going to use some days. And there's a different type of xuan. There's called shu xuan, means a little bit cured. And there's a sheng xuan, which is, you know, more raw. So, and they have a different absorption of the, the paper, and it's made of rice. The process, if you Google it, there's a lot of YouTube video, you can see how intensive and uh, making in the xuan paper alone is really, it's all handmade, the good ones and it's not easy. So I'm gonna pass one so we can just make a feel of how the strand paper is different from the modern paper, right? So I pass one of each. So if you feel there's one side is a little bit rough, one side is a little bit, and you can, I don't know. Well, you take one of this if you don't want to touch other people's because I know we have a little bit concerned. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, just take one of the package so you know you know you're not gonna touch other people's germs. <laughs> so yeah, so the invention of paper is amazing. That's one of the four big inventions from China. And in calligraphy, painting, and they 
created actually from the bark of the sandalwood tree and uh, has a reputation, has a longevity for this paper. So it will not disintegrated, you know, disappeared. So that's why a lot of um, history can be cut by writing. And the old days, actually, if you remember, before the paper was invented, it's on some kind of real barks, right? Or you carved on wood or bamboos, but then Chinese people are very proud made the paper and made it so much easier and easier to, to keep the stories in the written form. So, and often it smells good too because when you think about it from the bar of the sandalwood. So next of the four treasure, thank you so much. Yeah, you can keep that one there because we're gonna do some practice before I give you a really good paper to write something you can take home, maybe frame or whatever later on. So another one is the ink. So ink is, um, in the traditional way, it's actually used the ink stone, if you see on the top of that little corner. So you have this, it's called the yan tai. So there's uh, the little um, triangle thing, and that's actually all natural ingredients, and that's the ink. So that's why to write the Chinese calligraphy or start painting is a whole process. In the ancient times, the scholar or people like artists before they start create arts, they would actually even light up the incense, they will bathe, and they will put the nice clothes, and then they will almost like a door to meditate, you know, just quiet in mind and before they even start. And then to have an ink stone and the yan tai, meaning that little container, you can make ink with the ink stone on the surface. It's also part of meditative process in the ancient time because think about it this is my little thing right and then i have my little ink stone and you sit in there and all the days i just sit on like yoga practice you do this you just go like that and then there's a lot cute stories fable stories the handsome scholar would have a beauty, would help him to do this, and then there's a love story just involved from that, a little companionship or whatever. So, as you see in this example, the craftsmanship also can make, either the ink stone was beautifully gold painted, or of course, definitely that special object, it can be very ornate. So that itself became the craft art form when we're talking about ink and the uh, ink stones as well as such. So now, yeah, we got all the four treasures understand. So people use that as a gift and some commemorative sticks are even is strictly carved and inscribed with um, calligraphy inceptions. And so some like imperial ones is huge and itself has beautiful calligraphy or some is like 24 gold. Whatever. Today, the salmon calligraphy continue mix the ink, stick, and water to create their ink. But while others, which we're going to try today, is a pre made ink, or sometimes like a even make it even easier, it's, it's already been embedded in the brush. So, next, um, treasure of the studies. So, I like to Bring this one because um, we can talk about this as a um, group. I first, since we have a very small group, and looks like a lot of people here have some form of experience already. Because in my other classes, I want to keep it simple when I demonstrate really how the stroke goes, and you can just pick one of these elements to practice and to write. But if we're keen, and able, we might write some real characters. I mean, it is all characters, but with some nicer meanings. Instead of just Jin Mu Shui Huo Tu. So it started with metal, earth, fire, wood, and water. And then, as you know, that's go another beyond another topic for Chinese, um, how they can be generating the, the interaction or overcoming. So that's whole other scope what you call horoscope. <laughs> okay, so now we look at the Chinese characters. So what Chinese language is? Chinese language and characters are actually the system of the symbols. 
used to write Chinese and make it the oldest system of writing in continuous using as a living language. As we talk about the Chinese culture, it's a symbolic language. So just give you a little example, you know, of course Egyptian does that, but they no longer practice anymore, but the Chinese culture still is the oldest language written as a symbolic language to use today. And of course it involves from the very beginning. When we're talking about symbolic, so for instance, I use this as an example, the big character, you know, is square. Eventually it became square, but at the beginning it was like, this is called the light. So light, what gave us light? Sure. Yeah, sure. sun and the moon, very good. So that's why in ancient Chinese, you just draw a big circle with a dog, think about it, that's the sun, right? It could blind your eyes. And then the moon, it was this crest. And then that two together, the light source and became light. And now of course, and then we go beyond and like a chi, so how that to type into your the bright energy and all that. So, so all this involves, so if you see anything with one particular part in Chinese, Character, you already know that is either to do with hands, writing, painting, or sword fighting, or it's to do something with feet. And so that is really easy. And there's a saying you only need about 800 Chinese characters, you can be pro efficient in Chinese language because you can multiply. Okay, so to finish this first little lecture portion, I'd like to finish with this short journey together as this quoted from a best-selling book called Between Heaven and Earth, A Guide to Chinese Medicine. As we said, it has a meditative uh, effect to practice calligraphy. And um, so before we start this little journal, hands on. Matter is a chi taking shape, mountains forming, forests growing, rivers streaming, and the creatures proliferating are all manifestations of chi. So it's ongoing process. In the human being, all functions of body and mind are manifestation of chi. That's why you have sensing, cogitating, feeling, digesting, stirring, and propagating. This is the fundamental mystery and miracle. Okay. So I'm gonna stop this now. Thank you, Jacqueline. Now, are we getting excited to try to have some hands-on experience and to practice and see how we can master it as much as we could? Because it's a lot is your personal interpretation. Um, before we do that, I'd like to show that little clip. That's probably a good thing. Because I don't know if you guys seen, um, the Chinese cinema actually is, have some produced amazing movies. There's one called Hero. I don't know if any of here, I highly recommend it. Maybe you do the movie night. <laughs> so it's basically based on the true story. And uh, I show you this little clip and Jacqueline is going to play. And then we can talk a little bit about it. So this is a very short um, clip of this uh, epic movie made based on the true Asian event in China is called Hero. So there's a ruthless emperor and the people try to assassinate him and there's a whole story behind that. And so to keep your calmness, but also by writing calligraphy, we're talking about that powerful and have a chi around you to defeat all the arrows and weapons and to basically um, fight the military invasion. That's why the chi is so important and calligraphy as the art form also has the power to transform into the, the sword fighting but without blood, right? So you can have that force in you even without having to draw the blood. 
Okay, so are we ready now? So I'm gonna put my um, mask on and I'm come to around to try to examine your pants first. And then we're going to get this one later. So this day is the one they do uh, shun paper, shun paper. The um, principle is the same, how to make it, right? With the barks and with, you know, you have to cook it and you have to mince it together. And then if you see some um, YouTube video, I highly recommend it. It's a huge part, you know, and then you have to lay like a big, big piece, like maybe some as big as this room, and then you cut it into individual pieces for, for the practice on it. So, um, so we all have this pen, and I do notice, Kate, yours, uh, I give you the why it's a little bit thinner. So, so we're talking about, you know, traditionally, you have, as you see, maybe we can leave the one for the four treasures. So, yeah. And then so they can see what traditional to inspire them. Meanwhile, we're just going to go with the easy route. <laughs> So, so see if you buy this one, uh, this is, uh, you can use it. That's the funny thing come to in-person class because I didn't supply it. But then I can also let you know where you can get it. There's a store you can get in field class. So really this is a thin one because they come with a very thickness. As you see, this is a lot smaller than mm -hmm. that one. That's a medium size. And you can go even like large or extra large if you want to write more. But of course, if you write with like real brush, you can have pick the brush has much thicker hair, which is a lot more fun, you know. And we're talking about there's a different style of writing too. So today we're just going to practice more like called Kai Shu. So it's a formal writing. And there's also Xin Shu means, you know, like more flowering and flowing one. And there's also Li Shu, which is, you saw in the movie clip, that's more like a Li Shu. So it's like a more ancient, like more structured. Um, so all kinds of different. And then of course, throughout the history, there's all kinds of Chinese famous calligraphy and invented their own style. And that means you will have your calligraphy that just it's you. That's why there's Chinese say called Ren Ru Qi Shu, meaning uh, I'm representative of my calligraphy, or my calligraphy can tell people my character, right? So we all okay with this now to have it out. And then make sure you tie it really tight when you screw it back on. And then I'm gonna use this one because this table is a little bit shorter. So I'm going to basically write it while sitting down, and we are sitting down. As I said, you could actually uh, stand up. So first of all, we're going to um, squeeze this a little bit. Can you see the ink is just slowly coming down? Make sure you're really tired, because I don't want to really get the black marks on your hands. So I come to see. Yeah, I take a few ways. So I do both ways, the real brush pen and this way. You see, this is still a little bit shorter. The real one should be a lot longer. So ideally, you want to hold it about half, but that's harder to control. So if you want to come down with it, that's okay. And so let me just use this one because then we're all on the same page, it's easier. So since it's a little bit shorter, still, just try to see the middle way. Just my thumb and my index finger first. And you want to almost like have a little cup of the wrist. Yeah, perfect. A little bit cup of the wrist, like you play golf or tennis or whatever. Four. And then, so this two hold, right? And then the other two, almost like close, just naturally next to it. Perfect. And very loose. Very yeah, beautiful. We call it a, we call this is a lanhaj in Chinese. So it's like a irises, like little flower. So you can use it like this. So just easily and it's a little bit curved. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 
very nice. And then the last one, the little pinky, to go back and control it, that should come from this side. So two fingers, thumb and pinky on the front, and the other three at the back. Okay, now, so I'm going to um, write uh, with it, and I show you, I hope you can all see me. Can all see me okay, right? So, so of course, you five, remember I was talking about it in the ancient time, you even bathe and light up incense and you calm down your heart. So whatever character you want to write, you need to picture it and then transform into your writing. That's why that last slice I was talking about, I really enjoy that in terms of talking about the, the foresting, you know, the streaming and the mountains. So when you write, say, xi shui, like creek, you will almost have to picture in, you're in that environment. And then when you write it, and it's really transformed more like a tranquilin creek sound and all that is coming into the choreography. So that's uh, the horizontal stroke. Now I can do it, hopefully. So just watch me first before you um, practice. And of course, you're not gonna cross your legs when you do this. It has to be, except when you sit on the floor, you do like yoga pose, you cross your cross like position, but otherwise you just have both feet on the floor like you're taking the blood pressure. So I'm gonna write it and just watch how I go the, the stroke. So you come down, okay, and you drag, cross, and then when you finish it, you almost finish like a little swivel to come back. And that's the horizontal line. And I do it one more time here. Horizontal line. And come back a little swivel. And I'm gonna come around to see how you do it. Good. So I'm going to just demonstrate one more here. How are we doing with time? I think we're almost at the end up. Um, are you lady? It's okay to stay a little bit longer. I'm okay, but uh, if you have to go, I know this is supposed to be our workshop, but there's so much information. You know? So I do one more time, okay? And then so you can see it, how I start movement. So hold the pants correct way, and you're almost like a, at angle to come down. You see that angle? And then you drag it. And then you almost go up a little bit and you come back and finish. So the whole thing is like this. See my hands go like this. Yeah. So why to conduct the, I have a, like a six classes, like a mini series to get you start writing correct way and with the right movement all that. I actually have some sheets has like a little outlines so you can see, you know, where arrow goes, how you come down and then come back, all that. So that's the horizontal one. And then we're going to try a vertical one. So just go straight up and then down. Drag it down. Same thing almost. And go back up. So it's like this. Straight, huh? down, up. And then you can control how much ink you want to come in. It's much easier if you use real ink, but this one you can also try to do that. You can have the dry look, you can have a wet look, and you don't want it to bleed too much. And that's also as part of, you have to recognize the rest paper, whether it's cured, which doesn't absorb the ink as much, and if it's raw, you have to move really fast, otherwise you've got a big blob already. So you touch the paper. So this is kind of cured one, so it doesn't bleed as much. Okay. So go up. And then there's uh, five strokes most used. So the other one is a dot, which is really easy, I show you. Just like a water drop, dot. Stop. And then you can also always have a little swivel, make it a little bit nice shaped instead of just this. You see this too? So, here. Start. 
And then there's cup here. So come this way. So this is super easy. You just hold the pen and go straight down. Then to the track. Okay. And then na. So, so that's pie. Dian pie na. Na is go the other way. Go like this. Remember, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then go down. There. That's a na. So I was talking about water, right? Quick. So I just write you a water. And it shows on that uh, uh, little movement too. We can put it back on. You can copy it. But I just going to do this. So. That's water, so you can think about it. The water, like trunkling and cascading, running. Yeah, it's a symbolic language. So that's water. And it conquered the little horizontal and little pie and straight up okay and then the next character I'm going to demonstrate is Huo just to show you so make sure squeeze 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 and the dot this one I got a little bit up almost like a little flame. And if you think about the fun fair, so here's the wood, right? And little flame. So I'm going to write it really big, though this brush is not very thick. So normally the bigger the character you do, and the brush should be bigger, because make it nice, right? So I'm going to write, yeah, I think it works, right here. So it's a spring. So when you write it, think about it. You know what spring, what smells like a flowers and how the the green just start baths out. So, so just watch me and then you can practice. So one stroke, right? Two stroke. And then they have a little bit different lens. If you see the first one is actually second longest. And the middle one is the shortest. And the last one is the longest. Swiss jokes. And then you're going to do one here. And then you're going to see one now. Yeah, I give you a little. Um, character on the table and I can write a couple and then I pass on the first. Oh yeah, that's um I will have the email for the participant the in class student, right? If you guys are okay, is that okay? I sent you like a link and of like even if you would like to continue to practice or even where you can get this brush. Okay. Thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so then we have a horizontal one and another vertical one. Actually, you come straight down, connect two together, and then another vertical right in the middle and finish with another horizontal. So that's a twin. See that?